Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on the Inclusive Storytelling Podcast. I am your host, Ashwini Prasad. For this episode, I am keeping it about Asian Americans, Asian Canadians, and other Asian folks and focused in on them, given the horrific murders that happened in Atlanta, Georgia, USA this past week. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you find this episode informative about the different contributions of AAPI community members to the world. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to take a look and find my contact information either at theinclusivescreenwriter.com or on Instagram at theinclusivescreenwriter. Thank you so very much. Adrienne Clarkson was the 26th Governor General in Canada. She came to Canada as a child in 1942 when her family left Hong Kong after the colony surrendered to the Japanese. On September 8, 1999, Adrienne Clarkson became the Governor General of Canada. The Sapais were World War I soldiers who were under the quote-unquote British Empire. They were British soldiers. 1.3 million of the Sapais served, and out of that 1.3 million, 400,000 were Muslims. It is said from the little history of the Sapais that if they were not at the Western Front, that the French coastline would have fallen to the Germans. There were three major battles that the Sapais were in in Ypres, Belgium, during World War I. Shioni Sugihara was a Japanese diplomat. In World War II, he was stationed in Lithuania. He saw the genocide that was happening with the Jewish people. Him and his wife forged transit visas so that Jewish families could travel across Asia and escape to the Dutch Caribbean. Gioni played dearly because he was caught and he lived his life for many years working as like a salesperson door to door. Eventually he was given a good job but he did have to leave Japan for it and his family. For me, we should always remember this wonderful person, Shioni Shugihara. On a personal note, when I first posted about Shioni, the Japanese Schindler, a former client of mine messaged me and said that his rabbi's wife's family was one of the families that had used the forged visas from Shioni to escape and their lives were so much better for it. Thank you, Shioni. The state of Oregon in the United States is known for its racist roots. It was started as a racist utopia for and by white people. With the immigration and migration of South Asians from the Indian subcontinent in Canada and the United States, a group of Indian migrant workers found themselves in Astoria, Oregon. They lived and worked in the factories and also lived together in what was called the Hindu Alley in Astoria, Oregon. Today, there is a plaque commemorating the migrant South Asian workers in the small coastal town of Astoria. Mary Tape is an amazing woman. After the city of San Francisco, California in the United States cut funding for a public but segregated Chinese children's school in the mid-1880s, Mary's daughter, Mammy, was now excluded from attending public school. Mary and her husband, Joseph, 
try to enroll Mammy into the all-white Spring Valley Primary School in 1884. However, Principal Jenny Hurley refused to admit Mammy, citing the existing school board policy that excluded Chinese children from admittance. Some of these children were born in the United States and U.S. citizens. Mary and her husband fought for Mammy to go to public school like any other U.S. child in the late 1800s in San Francisco. The tape suit and the court case, Tape versus Hurley, went all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States, where the Supreme Court of the United States found the exclusion of Mammy as a Chinese U.S. American from public school based on her ancestry unlawful. The victory came at a great cost. In order to prevent Chinese children from attending public school with white students, San Francisco school board officials set up a new school for children of Asian ancestry to further exclusion. That same school board that had previously cut funding for a public school. Chinese and now children that were considered from Mongolia could now only go to this new school and exclusion was furthered. Noor Unisa Unaya Khan was a World War II spy for the Allied forces. She lived the spy life, filled with the briefcases, going from apartment to apartment and relaying information that was key to the Allied forces winning World War II. Noor's mom was from New Mexico, United States, and her dad was from the Indian subcontinent. Noor, unfortunately, was found out and betrayed and she was executed at the end of World War II at Dachau. I hope you found this episode informative. We all need to take our part and stop AAPI hate. Some of my immediate action steps are one, to check in on my friends who are part of the AAPI community, two, speak up when racism is out and about in the world. Three, use my podcast as an advocate for AAPI folks. Donate to organizations who are stopping Asian hate. And lastly, supporting AAPI businesses. Thank you so very much for listening. 